everyone, Clawland here, and you're watching another episode of Left Hand Reviews. Today we're going to take a look at an expansion to a game that I reviewed previously called Dogfight Starship Edition. If you didn't have the opportunity to watch my review of Dogfight Starship Edition, I advise you to go watch that now. Just pause this video and go watch the other one. Because this, I'm not going to really go into the rules or gameplay of the base game, because we're just going to take a look at the components and the additions um, that are present in the expansion. Now if you remember, uh, Dogfight Starship Edition is basically a tactical combat game that combines uh, the some elements of card-driven battle games, or card games, with the spatial element of a board game or a hex encounter war game. Players are going to be playing cards, and those cards allow them to maneuver their ships and perform special abilities while they're physically going to be moving their pieces on an actual game board. So today we're going to take a look at the expansion number one, which is the Bright Edge expansion for Dogfight Starship Edition. Um, so let's take a look at what uh, designer Michael Fox included in the expansion and how this improves upon the 2008 release. The Bright Edge expansions can come in the uh, same size box as the base game, which is uh, from the Game Crafter, of course. You can see that on the back. So let's take a look at what comes inside. So the first thing you're going to see here is a bunch more cards. Now, it is required that you have the base set um, in order to play the game. These cards are not pre-constructed ship decks like that, what came in the base game. These are, in fact, cards that you can use to customize the existing ship decks. And there's some rules on how you customize the decks and how many duplicates of cards you can have, etc. Um, but I think that's really nice that you now have a bunch more cards and you can actually start making the different decks work for you. Or, I should say, playing the style that, that you prefer. Uh-oh. Is it a Euro game? Nope. Just some cubes, which are going to be used for various things. And a new map. And again, these maps are double-sided. You can see this, I think they call the Saturn map. Because it is, in fact... A map of Saturn. Now, what's special about this map is with the base game, the map kind of encompassed a, a large area of a particular star system, whereas these maps in the expansion are called campaign maps, and they're actually going to be focused in on a smaller section within the larger map. So basically what that means is once all players are familiar with the game, you can start with players starting on the base game map and somewhere on that map there's going to be a card um, that will uh, start a campaign so there will be a Saturn card on the main map and when one of the or when the ships navigate to that Saturn card on the map then you'll discard that map and you'll bring out the Saturn map kinda of like you are zooming into the area around the planet where the campaign will begin now on the map here, it's going to tell you a little bit about the campaign, the name of the campaign, some of the setup um, details here. There's a time track here, and you're going to have your various start spaces. You have an extraction point here, which has to do with this particular campaign, which is a mission, of course. And then you have your um, areas on the map that are going to block line of sight. This map, just like in the base version of the game, is double-sided, so we can flip this over and you can see um, on the other side here we have another campaign. So the Bright Edge expansion is going to ship with two different campaigns. Now you'll notice, the uh, if you remember, the blue outline on the hexes means that they are a uh, an obstructed hex. But on here there's also a purple outline with in the blue outline. Now that means that these are blind spots. And blind spots act just like the um, the obstructed hexes except for the fact that there is an additional requirement to be able to gain line of sight. And you must roll a d6 and it must equal the value within that blind hex in order to overcome line of sight restrictions. So that can make it definitely more difficult. And you can see this is an asteroid field so it kind of makes sense that acquiring line of sight with all these asteroids flying around would probably be a little bit more difficult. So anyway, let's flip back to the um, Saturn map here, and I'll go over what exactly the Saturn campaign is and what it adds to the game. 
So the way that the campaigns are described in the rules is that you have a contender, which are the people trying to accomplish the mission, and you have the non-contenders or other players which are trying to disrupt the contender from completing the mission. The game is uh, very flexible because missions can be done solitaire, where it's just yourself, um, maybe testing out a new deck of yours against um, you know NPCs. You can do a solo mission, which is a little bit of a misnomer in my opinion, but that just means it's you against a team of other people trying to stop you from completing your mission. And then of course you have team missions where you can have maybe two players trying to accomplish the mission, which would be the contenders, and then two uh, players on another team that are trying to stop you from completing the mission. Uh, so let's just take a look at how uh, this would set up, say, for a solo mission. So what it says here is you need to place one Saturn card on the game board, which would be on the on the uh, other game board, which would then be where you access this. Now, when you're a beginner, the designer recommends that you just start right on, on this map until everyone's comfortable with the mission. Um, then you're going to place six platform cards face up next to the map with matching maneuvers cards and place six black tokens on Titan. Now, there weren't any black tokens included here, so I'm just going to use orange ones. And I'm going to place the orange tokens here on Titan. Um, for you astronomy enthusiasts, you know that is a moon of Saturn. And those are going to be represented by the assault platform cards here. And of course, I'm going to have six of them. And I'm going to put them off next to the board here. And just like the um, sh capital ships, the assault turrets are going to have an attack, a range, a hull value, and uh, various abilities. Now they are also, these are considered NPCs, non-playable characters, because they are going to act for themselves based on their maneuver sheet. So again, that's how the game is going to uh, control them. Alright, and then we can look at the objective card, and that's going to tell us what our objectives are for this particular mission. Since we're doing it as a solo mission, um, we would say one contender must orbit Titan for two consecutive prep phases and then exit the map via the extraction point, which is here. Or, they can destroy four of the platform tokens. So once per turn, the assault turrets are going to make their move based on the assault turret maneuver card. And it's really easy, you just look at the card, it says before any other action occurs during phase one, the assigned player rolls 1d6 to determine which of the above support craft will execute this turn. So you roll a d6, so you roll a two, you just reference the number two up here and it says, these assault turrets increase their range by one for the remainder of the game. And then it's going to say select only platform tokens with one or more targets in range and execute attacks. Use dice to maintain hull of any damaged platforms. Okay, so each of these are going to attack, you know, if any are in range, and then you're going to continue with the rest of the turn. Also, remember this clock up here, it's going to start on seven, and each turn it's going to count down. If it gets all the way to zero, the contenders automatically lose. So again, the game's going to work just like the base edition. Each player is going to have their um, their ship deck, and ships are going to be moving around the board, attacking each other. But this adds another complex component where the contenders are, are not only trying to survive, and they may choose to attack some of the uh, opponents, but they're trying to complete this objective above all else. Now, if you recall, in my previous review of the base game, uh, it's important to note that there is an advanced set of rules for Dogfight Starship Edition. Once you get comfortable with the base game, it is definitely worth your while to incorporate those advanced rules because it's going to add a lot more to the game and it will make the game itself last a lot longer. And one of the advanced rules that the designer highly recommends you use in these campaigns because of the NPCs is called the Drift Rule. And that's going to happen during the preparation phase. Um, the... Uh, NPCs, in this case the platform turrets, have uh, the opportunity that they might drift through space. And that is obviously going to add an additional uh, interesting dynamic um, to the mission. So really that's all there is to the campaigns. It's going to operate in mostly the same exact way as the base game, but it's just going to provide some more variability to play. Uh, as in, if in case you're not in the mood for just doing a straight shoot 'em up back and forth battle, then you can um, do this mission format. I just want to show you some of the uh, new and interesting cards that come in the expansion. There's two intervene cards uh, in here, and actually the intercept card says move, 
but I really think this is an intervene card, but they do exactly what you would expect. They let you intervene um, during an action, and uh, Offer Aid says, when you use an effect or ability that includes a repair, you may repair the hull of another vessel in the same space instead. And Intercept, just like you would expect, select a vessel declaring an attack, then select one vessel in the same space as the attacker, which you control to be the target of that attack, then resolve the attack on the new target. So that's a good way just to throw a wrench into your opponent's plans. You're also going to have uh, additional NPCs in here. You have one that's called the FAS Pulsar. That's basically a capital ship. Um, or, well, in this, I guess it's a support craft, but it's going to act similarly to a capital ship. And you're going to have the Pulsar's uh, movement card, of course, as well. And then you have a whole bunch of these uh, drone vampire bats, which can become a huge pain in the butt while you're playing the game, because they uh, they actually come into play on the uh, other campaign, and they spawn like crazy, and they're just they're a nightmare. And of course, they have their uh, maneuver card as well. I just want to share a couple more cards uh, included in the expansion that I really like. One of them being the Mission Catastrophic Onslaught. Uh, this is uh, an intervene card, you're going to discard it, and it says you must have priority, play this card only when the vessel suffers six or more hull damage in a single attack. For that damaged vessel, if there's any set cards in any of that player's tiers, destroy one of those cards. This is brutal um, to your opponent. If they have cards in their play area that they're going to play, and you're able to take one of them, you can totally screw up someone's plans with that. Uh, we have deploy drone. Move your drone. Uh, move one drone support craft to the table beside your ship. Add one token on the map in the same space as this vessel to represent the drone. And direct hit, always a good one. When an attack occurs, that attack inflicts two extra combat damage. And as you can see, the artwork on these cards is is nice. It's it's up to the same standards as the uh, the base um, edition is of course there are some duplicates of some of the cards that are in the base game as well but that's really all there is to it so I really like this expansion to dogfight starship edition and the reason for that is because a lot of times in just the all-out slugfest melee back and forth uh, it, to me it can kind of get samey and old because you're just trying to do the exact same thing, and the way my brain works, I like to have some sort of set of rules or missions or something that I'm trying to accomplish, and that's why this fills that niche really well, because you have one player that has something specific that they have to accomplish, while the other player or team is trying to destroy them. And actually, there's another uh, way to play the game that I didn't even mention, Free For All, where all players are trying to um, accomplish the objective, and that looks or I'm sorry, that works really well if you have a whole group of people, like say three or four people all on the game board, all trying to accomplish the objective, and at the same time trying to kill each other off and do all this other crazy stuff. That works really well with this game, and I really like that aspect to it, because you can either go for that objective, or you can go after the other opponents, and it's likely that it's going to be a mix of the two, and in my opinion that makes the game a lot more tense. Um... So really, I don't have a heck of a lot more to say. The game, um, it's fun. It comes with lots of cards. I like now that you can customize your decks once you have the expansion. Um, definitely you're going to want to play the base game several times before you get into the missions. But I think the missions is a good way to improve the, um, the fun factor of the game before you move into that advanced rulebook. And you may not want to move into the advanced rulebook if you just want to keep it simple, short and simple, and that's fine. And this is a great way to extend the amount of time uh, that this game feels fresh. So there you go. Dogfight Starship Edition, released in uh, 2008 by Michael Fox. It's a fun game. I think the campaign expansion is a must-have um, if you like the base game because it's going to add a lot more to it. So there you go. Definitely check that out on the Game Crafter um, or on Board Game Geek. Thanks for watching.